and I do find myself sometimes talking to bees and making it a back and forth. And while I don't think they really understand what we're saying to them, I think there's something to be said for a two-way interaction with organisms like honeybees that we're managing or wild bees that we're trying to foster their well-being. So the back and forth exchange involves listening, but maybe also telling them how we're feeling too. We live in a society at a time where one of the most audacious things you can do is to reach across the aisle and actually have a dialogue with people who may have different points of view. It is unfortunately audacious to interact with and listen to and really try to understand people of different perspectives. So in that sense, the Audacious Conference was truly audacious, not only in coming up with ideas that may be fairly out of the box of contemporary traditional ways of thinking about bees, but also audacious in that the range of people that were there had a lot of different opinions and used dialogue to um, understand each other and came to much clearer uh, ideas, outcomes, because of uh, first attempting to reach those understandings. I'd sit by flowers, first thing, and uh, watch all the different species of bees that come in and out. And then if you really want to get into the honeybee world, find a beekeeper you can go with and uh, work with them as they open a hive up. Uh, try to um, handle some frames and get the feeling for what it's like to keep bees. There's nothing better than hands-on, but hands-on only works if you slow down and you're really present and you really feel like the listening part is a prime reason why you're there. I've lived in the most remote, far-off jungles that are as pastoral as you can imagine, and I've lived in the heart of a number of major cities, and I find them both uh, comfortable and intriguing. To me, cities are very much like giant beehives, full of collaboration and communication, lots of work going on, lots of activity. But even in cities, you can find some very quiet pastoral places. Where we live is very close to one of the largest urban parks in the world, Stanley Park. And so I can go from a very urban to a very pastoral setting in virtually a minute or two. So I, to me, it's very uh, comfortable. Well, science is a rigorous way of thinking about the world and of testing hypotheses, but it's not the only way you can look at the world. And for scientists, it's important to get out of that scientific mindset and see things through other lenses. For hobbyists, for beekeepers, it's equally important to think about adding some rigor into what you're doing and maybe bring in some of the scientific method. The sweet spot is in the middle where science and the values and approaches outside of science can meet. Uh, it's just fascinating for hobbyists, even if they can't get the kind of hive numbers that a scientist might, to try some small experiments. It's a way of not only testing the world around you, but of really getting to know your bees much more intimately. My favorite honey is Heavenly Honey, which is the honey that we used to make at Simon Fraser University. It is the best honey in the world. It's a mix of maple, dandelion, clover, some fireweed, berry crops. And um, when I closed my bee lab down, we last, last year we stockpiled enough Heavenly Honey for the rest of my life. So I have Heavenly Honey, but not so much to give away anymore. Now here Fernando is pointing out the bees seem to be attracted to the camera. 